in my hive here, this hive is the hive that I have wintered, overwintered. I had it wrapped in insulation and, um, you know, one thing that is so, is something that's so important to remember is that bees do take management. You can't just get bees and put them out in the field and forget about them. There's a lot of things that you need to do um, to help the bees. Our job, our role is to be a helpmate mate to the bees and to do what we can to keep them free from mites and foul brood, to keep them having enough room so that they're um, comfortable and, and able to work and not wanting to swarm. It's our job to, to help them stay around and to, to, to want to stay in the, the home that you've given them. So I'm going to be doing some management of this hive to hopefully help prevent swarming. It's a very strong hive and uh, there's one way that a lot of beekeepers do is to just swap the top box with the bottom box and that has worked for many a beekeeper. So I'm going to set this lid aside. I'm going to open it up. So I am going to <laughs> Oh, they are so heavy. <laughs> I am going to set aside this top box. I've got it loose now. Um, I don't know if you can see in the video here, but we have, they've eaten at the last part of their, their pollen patty is in that top, that corner right up there. They're eating on it, so. Set that aside. Now, my goal of, of what I'm going to do is, all right, uh, I'm also right now, I've got some tall grass here. I'm just gonna cut that, take that out of the way. So the entrance, I do have some tarp underneath, but. So I'm gonna remove the four middle frames in this bottom hive. So. And then I'm going to set them aside. Essentially, I am going to be swapping the four middle frames of the bottom with the four middle frames of the top. And checking on them. You know, moving, simply moving them from and there probably is a lot of uh, opinions of what you know people what people agree with um, but simply swapping them doesn't necessarily change the congestion that is in the hives um, so by swapping them we'll be changing the congestion uh, kind of put making the congestion be in half if that makes sense, that the bees and the brood will be split up then. There was in that frame, there actually was um, some larva and capped brood in that one. And um, so there were some larvae in different, mm -hmm. just different stages. There were smaller ones and larger ones as well that would be capped soon. Generally, what you'll find with hives is that, you know, over the winter, the bees have moved up where the heat is. And so they're up in that, the top frame, and then they sometimes don't move down. And the queen says, oh my, there is no room, let's go. And then they swarm. This frame does have some capped brood in it. <laughs> on both sides a little bit. There 
is kept brood in here, the ones that will be kept soon. Lots of drone brood in this spot, this, this third one here. And as I switch them, I will also be placing them, when I switch them, I will be making sure that I am oh, keeping them in the same order that I took them out of. Before, um, after I remove these, I'm going to take the bottom board I'm going to um, clean it off really good. So, well, this one has a bit of kept brood. Let's see. I don't think I see any eggs in it. But it does have a lot of pollen. So I'm just going to be cleaning off this bottom board, move it aside here, clean it off with my brush. So I cleaned off my bottom board. Now I'll place my bottom board back on. <laughs> it's amazing how heavy they are. Lots of capped brood in this one. frame does have the capped brood and it also has brood that will be capped soon. So I have placed the four middle frames from this top box into the bottom box. Now I'm going to place the frames from the bottom box into the top box. This has been a really wet wet year 
Uh, so far, it's been pretty moist. They, I have seen that there is a bit of chalk brood that they're dealing with. I'm also going to put in a pollen caddy and I'm going to treat them for foul brood. Uh, maintenance, this hive doesn't have any foul smell or I don't see any signs of foul brood, but it's so important to prevent it. And I've heard that if you, there are several different forms of treatments that you can use for foul brood. And like any disease, the strains of the bacteria, the virus, whatever it is, can create a resistance. So I, as I treat them, I'm going to be going back and forth between the kinds uh, of, of what I use. And this right here is the Thailand medicine. And I'm going to be using a big scoop here and just along the, the edges here. Um, I'm going to sprinkle it along the edges. And then the, you know, I was reading some, or actually watching some YouTube videos on bees. <laughs> And one of the guys in the comments said, I don't use any treatments. I don't treat for any of it. It's kind of natural beekeeping. And my bees got foul brood and I had to burn every bit of it. And I thought, oh, that's so sad, you know? I do believe in natural beekeeping. I believe in just natural everything. And yet, we don't want our bees to be dying of disease either so I'm going to be titrated mine I also have a pollen patty here I'm gonna place on the corner up here <sighs> and then I will close up the hive I also I don't have any mite strips I'm gonna be getting some check mite strips to to put in the hive as well um, very soon. Again, it's, a, it's to keep our bees from being being sick and being overcome by mites is very important. They All right, and I'm placing the lid on. Thank you so much for watching. In this video, I shared with you how I was trying to prevent swarming in my hives. Swarming is a natural instinct for bees. They will do it from time to time when they are feeling cramped inside their little home. So it is our job to help them feel comfortable so that they don't swarm. Because when they do, they are taking a lot of the bees with them, the queen with them, and they're taking uh, uh, the reserves of honey with them to their new home, their new location. And so we don't want that to happen if we are wanting to extract honey at the end of the summer. And so we can do some things that will help hopefully, to prevent swarming. And 
so I just I hope that you learned and, and found value in the technique that I did use and we will see what happens this summer with my bees. If you are an experienced beekeeper and you do things differently, please share with us what you do and what has worked for you. If you're a new beekeeper, ask questions and we'll find the answer together. Again, my philosophy with bees is that you don't need to know everything about bees. You just need to know someone else who knows everything about them. Ask questions. Find that person. Ask questions and continually ask questions. If you see something that doesn't seem right, give them a call. If you feel like there just is something not quite right or you're just not even sure what the next step is with your bees, if you have somebody helping you, they most likely are would be very happy to help you in this process. So find that person and ask lots of questions. It's so important. If you did find value in this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And please also hop over to heritageclubstables.com and visit us. We would love to see you there and comment and, and share your thoughts and your how long you've been in beekeeping yourself, what, what, how many bees you have, anything you'd like. We would just love to, to connect with you and to see what you've learned through the years. So visit us at heritageclubstables.com and we will see you in the next video.